My name is Jared Pollan, and I'm a photographer. And I've been capturing amazing stories, one frame at a time, since I was 13 years old. And now I share my stories and my experience with the world. So join me as I travel the globe in search of incredible people, fantastic places, and wonderful adventures, one frame at a time. This is Frono's Photo. Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com here in South Philadelphia to go to Philly Typewriter to create an amazing photo story. So let's go in and start shooting. Hi, my name is Brian Kravitz and welcome to Philly Typewriter. So how'd I end up at Philly Typewriter? Well, since I've had this really old typewriter in the family for as long as I can remember, I went to Google I typed in Philadelphia and typewriter because I figured somebody has to be doing something here in Philly and boom, there it was, Philly typewriter, now open. Philly typewriter is a place you can come and see typewriters displayed in a beautiful fashion, taking you back 20, 30 years. We're in 2018, a child comes in here and just never seen a typewriter. And we have older people coming in saying, I can't believe you can, I can actually see one. There's people that come into the front door, walk in here, and just stand in the middle of the room and spend time just looking around and feels they just went into a cultural shock. So as I looked around Philly Typewriter, I saw all different eras of typewriters, things going back to 1910 and all the way up to the 70s, which is with an IBM Selectric. And I've never typed on any of these things. And just playing around and, and seeing how these things worked really kind of blew my mind. The resurgence that we're seeing now with the typewriter has a lot to do with, because our minds really work a certain way. We want to produce we want to see things happen. Somebody comes in, sits down in front of a typewriter. They've never used a typewriter. You press on the typewriter, the key goes up, makes a sound. There's something on the paper. The key goes back and moves over one space. You get to the end of the line. You go back with the carriage return. We have many, many people coming here. Don't They get to the end of the line and they say, oh, the typewriter's broken. And once you say to them, they, they just go, oh, you know. It's like a one moment, but it's an aha moment for them. The more I listened to Brian talk about typewriters, the more I saw the passion he has for resurrecting them and passing along the information and knowledge that he has. And of course, I thought, photo story. I need to come back and shoot a photo story. And so that's when I started the process to say, look, this would be really cool to get you working on these typewriters and get candid moments and get details and get the wide shots and get the mediums and get everything that tells a great photo story. So that's what we did. I am a typewriter mechanic. I've been a typewriter mechanic since 1975. How I got involved with typewriters, it's a long story. Well, at 18 years old, I went to California. At some point, I got a job working in a printing plant. One day, a professor came in. He walked up to me and handed me a brochure to a trade school in San Francisco. And I looked at the brochure and it had the different classes and one of the classes were typewriter repair. I had worked the next uh, year or so, or a couple years, in several shops and you know, getting on uh, uh, city buses with a Selectric in one arm and my tool bag in the other. I said, you know what, I wanna be in my own business. You can never forget about a good portrait and that's why I sat Brian down to get a nice portrait of him with the typewriters in the background, his workstations, but the focus is right on him because that photo is perfect for an about page so that when people show up to his website, they know who they're talking to. It makes for a great personal connection. I need a nice name. What name should I pick? This was the name of my shop. You're my type. I would ride my bicycle around, did service calls, put typewriters on the back of my bicycle. And then I spent the next five years running my own business. And the more my business grew and more my goodwill kept finding business, I was having less and less business. And one day I realized, wait a minute, what's happening to me? Computers are coming in. So really in 1990, I just locked the door. 
I left everything there. I handed the landlord the keys and I said, I, I'm not gonna do it anymore. And I went off and did something else. Now for you photographers out there, there's a great opportunity to work with these small businesses around the world. They could use your help. You can go in there and capture images and tell photo stories that these guys and the small businesses can use for social media to help them get more jobs and to expose themselves in a better light. And by offering up your services, you may find yourself getting more paying jobs for what you love to do, which is take photos. I'd come back to Philly. I had my own home to work in. My girlfriend works in financial, and one of the typewriters in there broke. And they said, we're gonna have to throw it out. And she said, no, wait a minute. And she just lugged this 37 pounds electric home, put it down, and I did a COA, clean, oil, and adjust. Cleaned it up, got it back, and then the light bulb went on. Wait a minute, I can do this. And the next three years was me in the laundry room, and the world started showing up. So when I was looking for a cool place to photograph the typewriters with an interesting background, Brian's workbench seemed to be the best place to do it. So when I put a typewriter down there, it really gave a cool look at the workbench and the typewriter that's there. And for social media, I thought this would be a great opportunity for Instagram photos, where you could put every single typewriter in this exact same spot and take every picture the same way. So that way you have a before of the typewriter and the after, so you could swipe on through the images to see the work that was done. But beyond that, you could share the story underneath from the age, who owned it, where it, where it was, all of these different things, and, and that's why this this bench shot seems to be something that they could work with into the future. It was a very odd feeling, you know, questioning myself, why did I go away? And then talking to people and saying, you went away because it wasn't here then. This happened to come back, and that's why you're here now. By 2017, there was so much demand for, this, for, the, for having typewriters on people's hands, writers, artists, they were coming to us. It was, it, was, it was enough for us to realize, yes, it's time to put up, a, uh, put up a shingle and actually have a storefront. I might have thought I was crazy three years before if I'd walked from nothing into this step, but I had three years experience knowing people were looking for me. So my typewriter's been in the family for as long as I can remember. It's always been sitting somewhere in the house throughout the years. Growing up, my brother and I used to sit there and bang on the keys and it would hit against the platen. We really never had this typewriter in working order. Before I brought it in, I was kind of worried if maybe we did some irreputable damage to it, but it turns out that it was fixable. Jared brought his typewriter into us to have it looked at. As soon as I brought it in and put it on the counter and let Brian look at it, he knew exactly what it was. It's a Remington 10. It has good decals. When you see a typewriter with good decals, it means it was put into a good location. He was able to put a general date on it around 1914. He was able to tell me that it seems to be in pretty good working order and that my brother and I didn't beat it up too much as a kid. Jared's machine is in very good condition, although you look at it, you might not think it is. The, it, move, it works, the carriage moves. You look at it and it's filthy. There's just some things that needed to be tweaked, replaced, cleaned, but after sitting around for probably 60 to 80 years, he said he should be able to make it work again. But this is just, just surface dirt. Underneath all that, it's just shiny black lacquer finishes. Beautiful, beautiful machine. They're never, ever, ever gonna make anything like this before again. So why did I want to get the typewriter fixed? Well, I should probably tell you that it's a family heirloom and it would be great to type on something that my grandfather and grandmother typed on. But the truth of the matter is, I thought it would be kind of cool to have a typewriter in the house to send some notes. We probably repair, I'd say more than a dozen typewriters every week. The most common issue on a typewriter is really they're dirty and they're dry because the metal will just last forever. It's metal. You have rubber, you have cloth ribbons, and then you have every joint. And after a certain amount of years, just eat, there's no more oil. The, really, the reason typewriters like became, let's say, passe, not known, because there were no mechanics. 
It's not that the people didn't want to use typewriters. not because the people didn't value the typewriters. And this is what we're seeing now. People bringing in machines that sat in a closet for 20, 30 years. They love them, but a typewriter is like a car. You got to change the oil. Here comes a typewriter right now. Could you? Here we go. Wow. Oh. All right, so I want to take a quick second to thank our sponsor Squarespace for making this Frodo story possible. Now, if you want to see a site that's built off of Squarespace, go to frodostories.com to find this Frodo story as well as future ones and all of the photos from the typewriter shoot. But if you would like to build your own website, I highly suggest that you use Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com slash photo to get a 14-day free trial. And if you decide that it's for you, well, use the code photo to save 10%. Now, let's get back to the typewriters. So getting those super detailed shots are really important and typewriters have a ton of opportunities to get detailed shots. From the ribbon, to the ball on the selectric, to the keys on the keyboard, to all of the levers, the bells and the whistles, though there are no whistles, there's lots of opportunities to get really cool detailed shots that will play well on a website as buttons, as backgrounds, pretty much for anything that you need. But remember, come into these situations, get those details because you never know when they're gonna come in handy. If you look at a typewriter and you want to tell the age of a typewriter, pretty much you think of a car and you think of the car's design, uh, the artists, the designers went into like Art Deco. If you go into the 30s, how things became round and then they're the big fenders on cars. Well, you look at a typewriter. You look at the, um, the Smith Coronas especially, they had the big bulbous fronts on them. And that was if you look at, well, you go a little farther in history, 1953 Chevrolets, look at the trunk. 1953 uh, Smith Corona typewriter, you look at the, the ribbon covers, same thing. You're looking at the same type of design and pretty much you can identify a typewriter year or around that year just by looking at the design work. The average typewriter that we look at is called a type bar machine. And then it all stayed pretty much that way until somewhere in the, in the middle 50s, they sat down and they said, we're gonna create something very, very different, It'd be dramatically different. And what they did is create the IBM Selectric. Just, just a, a quick understanding, most typewriters will have two or 300 parts in it total. An IBM Selectric has 2,500 parts in it. That's why when you hit a key on a Selectric and hearing all these things happen, you can kind of feel you're doing a lot of work. Now the Selectric is super cool because it's got one of these balls that spins around and as you type it, it's just doing all the work for you. And it kind of triggered something in my mind that this is really interesting. And by taking photos of these things, I think it would be cool to share this on social media. At first I thought it'd be great to share it with my followers. And then I was like, well, this is a great opportunity to help Brian and the people at Philly Typewriter share what they're doing, to help them share out the stories of old typewriters, to help them get the word out. And there's no better way to do that than social media. So I think that these images and videos are gonna help them broaden the spectrum of people that are aware of what they're doing. I just think the IBM Selectric's amazing. I look at it and people that come in, uh, people that are like involved in programming, I show them the underside of the typewriter, I show them all the their interposers and key levers, and they said, oh, this is how the computers were made. And just the realization that what we, the world we live in now really started with, with people looking at the inside of a typewriter, inside of a Selectric. One of the photos that I thought I would try to capture would be Brian holding a typewriter outside, but that just didn't work out at the time, but he did hold a Selectric ball, which gave me a great opportunity to get the ball in focus with him out of focus, then conversely get him in focus with the ball out of focus. My favorite sound 
is the sound it makes when you hit a key. It's a beautiful sound. It's so distinctive. You go into a house, somebody's way in the other corner of the house. You know what they're doing. I don't have to worry about notifications or any other distractions. I just type, listen to the sound, listen to that bell, and then pull the paper out and I'm done. You get people, they get distracted. You, everything we have around us is almost there to distract you. These will not distract you. You just sit there and you type and it just does one thing really, really, really well. There's something more personal about a typewriter. You actually have to carve out more time to spend on it because you have to go a little slower just in case you hit the wrong button. And also, there's none of those red squiggly lines underneath the words that I spell wrong because, because I can't spell. Now the next innovation to making a typewriter even better, spell check. You don't need a battery. You don't need an operating system. You have nothing to crash. You have nobody that could hack you. It just works. So at Philly Typewriter, they have a bunch of old machines just out for you to play with. They encourage people to come in and type to feel what it was like. Now, I don't recall ever typing on a typewriter, especially the one that we've had in the family because it's never actually worked. There's a future in typewriters right now. And we have to look at it two different ways because there's this future, it's called early typewriter collectors. This is like a collector's item. It's becoming vintage, it's becoming an antique. The other part of it is are the young people, young people that are not wanting to go along and conform to the computer. They're liking vinyl records. They're liking, they see the value in what happened before before the electronics completely has taken over and computers have taken over our lives. It's tactile. You get something physical right then and there that you created, and that's what's cool about it. It also reminds me of how important it is to print photos that you take, because that tactile feel, we've kind of lost it because people aren't printing their images. Well, in this case, you can physically print your images, and with typewriters, you can physically type your letter, and you have something tangible to hold on to. My favorite typewriters, and I think the standard Underwood and the IBM Selectric are right close to the top of my, the typewriters I favor the most. I really like the Hermes. Hermes is built like a clock. There's a machine called a Hermes 3000, and it's beautiful, and there's a lot of them around. They, they, they didn't die, they just got dirty and, and, and dry. People bring them in, they come back to life. So a really cool shot that I got was putting my old typewriter on the counter and then having Brian working at his workstation in the background out of focus. It kind of makes sense. Old typewriter with the typewriter repairman in the background. Pretty much it's one picture that encapsulates the entire story of Philly typewriter. The devices we use now are meant to be replaced. This was never meant to be replaced. It did what they said it was gonna do. It would outlast everyone. Not only does Philly Typewriter repair typewriters, but they also teach people how to fix them. And that made for a good opportunity to get photos of the education going down. So there's the photos of the typewriter upside down or Brian pointing to one thing with the student looking in on it intently. And those photos are important to share online because it helps tell the story about what Philly Typewriter is all about. What we're doing here is to ensure that the typewriter will be around for many, many generations to go by and it won't just die out and people say, I remember when. When I got the call from Philly Typewriter that my typewriter was ready, I went on over, walked in the door and saw this beautiful machine that's honestly never been cleaned before sitting right in front of me in working condition. I didn't know it had a shiny black paint underneath that was lacquered. I didn't even know there was some writing behind the red buttons. All of this stuff has been covered in dust and dirt for more than 50 or 60 years and it was pretty amazing to see it finally in working condition. I want to see Philly Typewriter go into the future that I could pass on my skill and others will know it so typewriters won't go away. I'm 68 right now. I probably have 10 years that I'll have the hand-eye motion that I need and maybe I could talk about it again for a number of years. 
but I better get some people that know what I know. And there's a group of people, they've already had careers and they look at the typewriters and get very excited about doing it. And these are the people that I want to have around me. It's people that really are excited about. They come in, they see it. They see we have a program here. We see there's something you could really study and get your hands right in the middle of the grease and do it. At the end of the day, I was able to get my typewriter repaired so I can start writing letters. And I was also able to create great images that are gonna help a small business push their business forward. This is great. This is fantastic. I, this, is, this is blowing me away that I'm seeing this in front of me. It's like nobody's ever put this kind of attention on anything I've ever done in my life. Oh, this is, uh, I, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. I'm, I'm, I'm right at home. You really are capturing what we're doing here. Thank you. This is really great. This is really great. Well, thank you so much. So we just spent a fantastic day here at Philly Typewriter in South Philly capturing some awesome photos that I know will go a long way to helping their social media presence. I also want to take a second to thank Squarespace for being the sponsor of this video and helping make it possible. And if you want to see a site built on Squarespace and houses all of the images from today's Frodo story, go to frodostories.com to check them out right now. And I want to thank you guys very much for watching. And that's it. Jared Polin, Froknowsphoto.com. See ya.